Creating CRUD functionality have never been easier in Blazor than with Rats and Blazor Studio. It unfortunately comes with a price, but as long as you just installed the Community Edition, you have at least 15 days with some premium features. Rats and Blazor Studio is extremely powerful and I will give you a short introduction to the core functionality of the program. So let's jump to Rats and Blazor Studio. And the first thing we will do is to go to File and say New Application. Then we have to choose a application type. And in our case, we will just use the Blazor Server application. Then we will write a name. I'll just call this Test. And then we will have to choose a framework. In my case, it's .NET 7. Uh, when I click it, I can actually see .NET 6 also because I have both installed on my PC. But a weird issue I had is that when I only had .NET 6 installed, then I couldn't even create a new application. But now when I come in here and choose the frameworks after I installed .NET 7, then I can actually see both. But we will just go with the .NET 7 version. And next we have to choose a theme. In this case, I'll just use the material, but you also have a dark theme and you have some software theme and all the themes actually look pretty cool. But for now, I'll just choose the material. Then we have to choose a directory where we want to save the project and you have to choose it because if we just hit finish you can see we have to add a directory where the project can be saved so let's click on this button and i actually created a folder already on my desktop i just called this folder for test project so i'll just select this and the use partial classes is just up to you. If you want a code behind file separated, you know, in Blazor, we have usually the code in the same file, the .razor file, but you can choose to have a code behind file instead if you tap this off and I'll just leave this on. So that's okay. And we will hit finish. And then we actually get the project over here. And if we expand this, we can see that it just looks like a normal Blazor server application. And up in the right corner, we can actually run it. So this page will be the default page when creating a Blazor server app inside Rats and Blazor Studio. And as you can see, we only have the home page right now. But we're, what we're going to do is to make some CRUD functionality where we are going to be able to add some articles to a database and some tags and also to link them together so that we actually have a many-to-many -many relationship and when you have the database ready it's actually so simple to do in rats and blazer studio because it will create everything for you and all the crowd functionality also and the ui for it so if we just open ms sql i already have a database as you can see here i have a database called master and inside this database, I have a table called article. And it's actually this one where we have an ID, a title and a body tag. Then we also have a tag table, which is this one. And it do also have a ID and then a name and a description. And finally, we have this article text table, which is the table that link the article and text together. And as you can see, together they are a primary key so the last thing we have to know now is what the server name is and as you can see i have it called desktop slash ul9 blah 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 slash sql express so that's the name of my server so that's what i'm going to tell rats and blazer studio that the, it's going to fetch the data from this server so let's go back to rats and blazer studio and we can just close our application so up here we have the database and as you can see we can use a lot of different sql technologies but we will just use the ms sql so let's hit next so now we have to specify the server name and this was my server name and right now i just want to authenticate with windows so let's change that from sql login to windows that's just because i am local right now and the last thing is the database which we called master and as long as we are not in a Azure database and we don't really have an internet connection to, to this project, we just want to leave this off. So let's go and say next. And now we come to the interesting part because we can see what entities we want to scaffold. So if we expand this DBO and the tables, then it actually found our tables from the database. 
and then you have to choose which of them you want to scaffold. But in our case, we will just use everyone. And then over here, we can see that it tapped off the cascade delete. And I don't really want that because then it's, if we delete a tag, maybe it will, it will also delete the article and we don't want that to happen. But it all depends on what project you're working on. And entity framework query tracking, that's fine. And optimistic concurrency is also fine. That's tapped off. So let's just hit next. And then it asks if we want to create pages for the CRUD operations. And we do want to do that. So now we have to choose if we want to have the CRUD like a, on a separate page, or if we want to edit them directly in the data grid. Or we have this where when we hit uh, one of the articles, it will display a box on the side where we can edit what uh, article we have chosen. And then we have some more options also. But what we're going to choose is this one. You can just play around with them, uh, create a project several times and just try to see how everything looks on the others. But for now, I will hit next. Then we want to specify the entities, uh, but that's just our tables from the database. And we want to select them all, so that's fine. And then you can actually choose a lot of different configurations here on the table. If you want to allow sorting and paging, and if you want to allow to edit and so on. And also you can search as you type. So let's try to tap that one off and let's say finish. So now it finished to build the project. And if we open the pages, we can now see that we have a articles and a article tags and a index and a tags racer file where the index of course is our front page. So let's try to run this. Actually, I already run it, but if we close it now and run it again, then we can see that we now got the articles and the tags and article tags page. So let's try to click on the articles. So now we actually have this very nice page where we can go and say, maybe add a new article. Then we can say, what title do we want? Article 10 maybe, and some body text, just write test and say save. And it actually does not update the table by itself. And it doesn't even give a response box. But I think that the one thing we have to remember is that this is version 1.0.1. So maybe in the future, they will add some extra to it, but else we just have to go and do this by ourselves. We can access the files that is created. So if we want to, we can actually just go and create this box by ourselves. But for now, if we update this view, you can see that we actually have the article 10 now. And if I click on it like this, you can see that we can edit it. So if I click the first one, Let's go and say 100 instead and say save. It actually on the fly update this one. And next let's try and search in the articles. So let's say article 100 and you can see it also update on the fly. But what's also a very nice feature with this many to many relationship in the articles and the tags. If I click the tags, it will just look like the articles. But if I click the articles tags, then we can actually see all the relationship that we have right here. And we can add a new one in here. We can choose a article. So let's say article 100, or let's just say article 10, because we have not given that any tags yet. And let's say that it should be tag that is called blazer. And let's say save. And again, we just have to update this view. And now you can see down here that we actually got the new relation. And I'm sorry, I can actually see this is version 1.00. The reason I messed up was because if I go to Blazor or Ratson Blazor Studios download page, there is actually a 1.01 .01 version now. And when you see this, it might be a lot higher, but I hope this video give you a good understanding of what Ratson Blazor Studio can do. I think the downsize with this is that if you go to pricing, then you can actually see it costs a lot if you just want to play around with it and you only get these 15 days with the professional edition. And that's pretty sad because you can see over here in the professional edition, we have the scaffolding from the database. So that was just what we did right now. 
But of course, if you are going to make a lot of websites and a lot of crowd functionality to a lot of customers, then this price may be a good price because you can really cut off some development time by using the Rats and Blazer Studio. But I hope you find this short introduction to Rats and Blazer Studio interesting. There is, of course, a lot of more functionality to the Rats and Blazer Studio, but I'll just keep this introduction short. So I hope you're going to have a nice day. And please like and subscribe if you like this video. And else, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.